the Attorney General of Virginia, Jason Miyares, joins us now. Sir, good to have you with us. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, great to be with you, Vince. And I, I thought that clip that was sent to me on election night, I thought it just perfectly encapsulated how out of touch so many in the legacy media, particularly at MSNBC, are. You know, border security is not the number one issue just among Virginia Republican primary voters. It's the number one issue among all voters if you look at the national polling, because it has reached a crisis level. And I thought it was an irony that, that uh, you know, Jen Saskia, who, run, who lives in Virginia, yeah. was making these comments clearly oblivious to the fact that just the week before she laughingly mocked her fellow Virginians, we, there had an illegal immigrant from Venezuela that had been apprehended in September of last year, had been released, and then sexually as charged with sexually assaulting a minor child. Uh, in Campbell County, Virginia. Um, and, the, and and whether it's this or with what happened with Lincoln Riley, we just had, it broke that a 15-year-old girl that had been abducted in Ohio was found in Bedford County, Virginia. Um, and all of these are preventable crimes. All of these are crimes that were conducted by individuals that, that in many cases were stopped at the border or we were aware they were here. They were basically part of this Biden administration cash and release program. They got released and and so Virginians are tired of it. Um, all Americans are tired of it, tired of it. It's why it's the number one issue, I think, that's going to be relevant this fall. And it just shows how out of touch, not to just surprise anybody, but how out of touch uh, so many of these elitists that are commenting on MSNBC have, have shown themselves to be. Yeah, and this is, of course, years in the making. We, we see uh, uh, crimes committed at the hands of illegal immigrants, all of which would be preventable if we secured our border. I mean, even the sort of the MS-13 gangsters that we see inside of some of Virginia's mm -hmm. high schools. For uh, It's just, it's it's out of control. And it's really scaring the the families, the voters of Virginia, uh, and they'd like to see some change here. Listen, I had, this is in the Latino community. I had I had a desire to do in Northern Virginia a, a, a um, gang awareness, gang prevention town hall about this issue, about public safety and, and, um, at a, at a local Latino church, and candidly, that tragically, the, the pastor confidentially said he did not feel safe being out in front in this issue. He encouraged me to continue to speak out, but that is so often the case. We hear this word privilege. Privilege are people that vote for policies, and they never have to deal with the ramifications of that. And so when you, when you allow this influx as well, there are people that will prey on fellow individuals, including fellow migrants in the, in, in the community. Uh, the average going rate that the, the Sinaloa cartel, which in my opinion, the Sinaloa cartel is the, the most dangerous criminal enterprise on the planet. They make the Italian mafia look like the boy charging on average about $15,000 to sneak, your, sneak somebody over the border. And what happens is they oftentimes will then never forgive, quote unquote, the debt. You have to work it off either through labor trafficking or through sex trafficking. And so what's happening at our border is like anything I've ever seen. To put things in context for your listeners, uh, during the, the Obama administration, Obama's uh, uh, Homeland Security director said that, that a daily crossing of about 1,000 to 1,500 a day or about 30,000 a month uh, was referred to as a crisis level of, of illegal immigration into our country. Uh, that's 30,000 was a crisis level. In December, it was 300,000. It's hundreds of thousands each month. That is what's happening. We've had enough illegal crossings since Joe Biden has been taken president, uh, 7 million. That is larger than 32 states. That's larger than the population of 32 American states. It has reached crisis level. It is why it's the number one issue on, voter, uh, on, on voters' minds. Because of all, all of that's coming with it, and um, they're very, very concerned about what they're seeing and these headlines are seeing, not just here, but they're seeing it in New York and other cities as well. I mean, is it, is it possible for us to get our arms around how substantial the human trafficking is in the United States right now? Human – well, let me put it this way. The largest criminal enterprise on a global scale is drug trafficking. The second largest criminal enterprise on, the, on a global scale is human trafficking. It's 150 yeah. – billion dollars a year. I know from both interviews of cartel members, uh, people that have, have uh, cooperated with law enforcement, and they're very open to the fact that what they have realized is that they can, if they have a fentanyl pill, 
or, or heroin or, or pick your, your drug of choice. They sell it and it's gone and they have to manufacture more. But if they're trafficking in a human being, that is residual income they can get over and over again. It's evil. I mean, you hear the way to describe a fellow human being, uh, somebody that has infinite value because they're made in the image of their creator, as just something to exploit, something to exploit over and over again, either for their labor or for their sex. And it is a different life type of evil. So getting our arms around it is hard because it is one of the most underreported of crimes. Victims will be exploited. They'll escape. The last thing they want to do is to testify. It's something that this governor has been passionate about. He, he put together in Virginia the first uh, witness protection um, uh, initiative in Virginia for these for victims, whether it's human trafficking or other crimes that feel unsafe to get them out of town. Very modeled very similarly to what we have at the federal level. But we were just running the fact that people don't want to testify. And, and as a former prosecutor, I could tell you, if somebody's not willing to testify, you don't have a case. You can't move forward. Um, the case tends to collapse. So it is a um, – it is not an insignificant um, uh, problem. It is a huge problem that we're facing right now, and it's something that we're gravely concerned that now the cartels, with all of their powers and resources, have discovered another revenue stream, and, and tragically, it's the trafficking of fellow human beings. Now, I assume, of course, this all is, a, is, is, is yet one more reason why you just announced in the last 24 hours that uh, you are officially endorsing Donald Trump for president of the United States and in 2024. Tell us what led you to this decision. Uh, you know, not not every Virginia official is making a public endorsement. Why did you? Well, listen, I mean, I, I, I thought from the beginning that the last thing uh, a Republican primary voters needed was another elected official to weigh in and tell them who they should or shouldn't vote for. I think they're, I trust them in the process. And uh, Donald Trump won big in Virginia on, on Super Tuesday night. Um, but I think this is a clear binary choice. And for me, this is a public safety uh, issue. You know, I, I'm in a unique position as attorney general of the amount of information and report that comes across my desk from both federal and state and local law enforcement. And to me, it is as grave as I've ever been concerned about the safety and security of our country. We, we, we've, uh, we've apprehended over 200 members uh, on the terrorist watch list at our border. And that's who we've apprehended. If you want to get an idea of who's gotten through, you probably need to multiply that number by four or five. And enough fentanyl is crossing our southern border to kill every man, woman, and child in America three times over. Yes. The reality is, 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 is Joe Biden, if he announced tonight, he won't, that he was just going to return back uh, to the return of Mexico policy. That alone, he has power right now through an executive order to put a, a variety of different policies in place to secure the border. But right now, it is an unmitigated disaster. It is, it is as concerning as anything I've done. He's failed to protect southern, our southern border. He's failed to protect Americans. And every state now is a, is a, a, border, um, a, a border state. Yes. And though MSNBC may not believe it, uh, that's the reality. Not even taking the fact that, that how it attacks our resources. What frustrates me is we are fundamentally a generous country. Uh, I'm obviously a product of, of immigration legally, and there is a huge world of difference between an individual that has to go through the process, the background check, uh, they swear an oath of allegiance to this country, an oath of allegiance to willing to serve in the military if called upon, mm -hmm. versus somebody who cuts some line. And to put things in perspective, over 80 percent of who we apprehend, quote unquote, apprehend at the border, they essentially get a piece of paper. It's like a parking ticket. It's like a traffic ticket. It says, we'll see you in court in 2028 or 2029. They get a court date four or five years from now, and over 90% of them never even show up. Uh, we never even know. And it is why this, you have the former FBI director writing a letter to Congress saying, we're having tens of thousands of military-age men coming from countries, some of which don't like us. By the way, it's not just Central or South America. It's China consistently is a top five on the number of, of illegals crossing our border yes. are from China. And so we don't even know exactly who is here. It is a national security crisis, unlike anything I've ever seen. That makes, in my opinion, that, that makes uh, this election is a clear contrast between President Trump, who wants to secure the border, and President Biden, who supports the catch and release of the border so, policy. So in that, in that presidential election, it's been uh, now 20 years since a Republican has been able to capture Virginia in the presidential election. That was George W. Bush back in 2004. I, I spoke to President Trump on Monday about this, and he said in our interview that he very much wants to make a big play for Virginia this year. 
Uh, latest polling has him just four points back on Joe Biden here. In other words, it's an actual contest for the Commonwealth. Um, should he begin campaigning in the state with an effort to win it? Would you be willing to campaign with him, given that you've just endorsed him? Well, I mean, listen, I think when it comes to campaigning, the one thing I often I've realized as a candidate myself is, the, is there's actually two things you never have enough of time and money. And they have to know what their internal polls. I like to joke, only trust the poll that uh, that you pay for. And right. so they're going to have to make the determination um, whether Virginia is indeed it was not targeted in 2020. I, to the best of my knowledge, he never made an appearance. I think he made a few in 2016, but I'm always happy to highlight um, his record on particularly border security and protecting America, not yeah. even counting the fact his record on cutting taxes and increasing our national defense versus Joe Biden's failed policy. I'm always happy to highlight that. Yeah, for sure. Well, we'll see, we'll see what happens again on, on to what kind of resources he commits to Virginia. Uh, obviously, he, he was here this past Saturday in Richmond. He wasn't joined by any statewide officials. That includes, of course, you. But normally we would expect, say, the governor to be there. Governor Youngkin wasn't. Although I did notice that Governor Youngkin came out and endorsed Trump right after your endorsement yesterday. What role do you think your endorsement had in getting the governor to say the same thing? Listen, the governor is his own man. I respect him enormously. I think Governor Yunkin is, is one of the best governors in the country. I think he is both an extraordinary leader and he's a dear, dear friend. So I can't speak to his thinking. I'm sure that um, um, his thinking is similar to mine, which is right. we got, you know, now it's time to go win. And, you know, we have a primary process. It's, it worked by design. It was a spirited, robust debate. Um, uh, unlike in the Democratic side, where essentially Joe Biden is is, uh, and I thought that was one of the, actually one of the most telling moments. The two most telling moments I thought on election night actually was the clip from MSNBC that you referenced, yes. but also the fact that even though Joe Biden, you know, had on paper a good night, quote unquote, by winning and and and, and rollicking the victories in these Democratic primaries, he wasn't willing to go on camera and address the American people. Uh, he wasn't willing to do the famous Super Bowl interview, which most presidents will always be interviewed right before the Super Bowl to a large audience. He he, he seems to be at a time when everybody's raising questions about his mental acumen. He wasn't willing to go on camera, even if it's just to cheer and say, thank you for your faith in me. Uh, I thought that was a telling moment. We'll obviously watch the State of the Union tonight, um, what happens. But I, I don't understand this idea that they could try to hide Joe Biden from the general public and think that's going to lower the number of questions people are having about his just his fitness for office right now. And I think that's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how much the media uh, is willing to ask hard questions. Uh, yeah, definitely. For the definitely. longest time, and it was obvious to the rest of us, they weren't even willing to ask the most basic questions. They would say if you would challenge whether Joe Biden was mentally fit uh, and his age was an issue, they'd say that was ageism. But when you look at, again, the American people are not fools. I just put a lot of trust in them. This is an issue where it's something – it's a majority of Democrats think he's too old, and I think it's approaching 70 percent of Americans think he's – they have questions about whether he has – his age is now a factor in his ability to perform his basic duties as president of the United States. I thought that was a telling moment he hit himself from the cameras on a night where he should have been uh, celebrating. All right. I, that's the Attorney General of Virginia, Jason Miara, sir. Thank you very much for your time. We're up against the, the break here. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much.